Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cut Content Show, and today I'm going to be covering Life is Strange Before the Storm. It's my second favorite game in the series, probably because it follows the missing girl, Rachel Amber. On top of that, we also get more Chloe lore, with her being the main character this time around. It was developed by Deck Nine and follows Chloe and Rachel three years before the main events of Life is Strange. It also introduced a couple new characters that were never in the original game, like Samantha or Steph, and also the main villain of this small story, Damon. And so with all that out of the way, let's get into some cut content. Speaking of characters, do you guys remember Taylor, one of Victoria's friends? Well yeah, she was supposed to be in the game but got cut, probably due to time constraints. But the best part about this is that there's at least 4 minutes of cut voice lines, and a handful of SMS messages. And on top of that, Chloe also has a journal entry for her, making fun of her and calling her nose big. Let's get on to some cut voice lines. Taylor always reminds me of a vanilla flavored mannequin that walks around in designer jeans, judging everyone. Chloe, I was just thinking about you. What? My mom and I were cleaning out some of my old clothes. I volunteer at Goodwill, and I was wondering if maybe you'd like me to bring some for you to try on? Maybe something a little less... Beer-stained? How nice of you, Taylor. I'm just looking out for you. We girls have to stick together. Believe it or not, I'm actually able to dress myself. Thanks. Oh, I know. I just heard times are tough, and I volunteer, you know? You're a saint. By the way, what's the word on you and Rachel? Everyone's talking about that photo of the two of you from last night. It's funny, I guess. I only say that because I had a party at my place last night, and Rachel didn't come. Wow, that is so strange. I can't imagine why she wouldn't want to do that. Right? But I guess the two of you got up to some fun. I want to hear all about it. I guess my invitation got lost in the mail. Totally! You also weren't there, and we were all really sad about that. But whatever, you were out having crazy fun. Where did you two go? You'll have to hear about it from someone else. I don't have the energy to talk to you right now. I hope she chokes on an ice cube. Oh my gosh. Did you party literally all night? What amazing venue was this? Well, look, I'm going to go let my mom know it's a definite yes on my old clothes. And then you can tell me all about last night's event while you're trying them on. Insulting my clothing and then trolling me for information about Rachel? I'm going to make her admit how fake she is. Okay, cut the shit, Taylor. We're not friends, so stop acting like we are. What are you talking about? You and me, Chloe. Remember all the good times we had in freshman algebra? Are you sure we had algebra together? Um, maybe I'm thinking of someone else? Zero points for random guessing. I think you mean the good times you gave Mr. Terry with your boobs hanging out in the front row. I sat in the back, remember? Well, even so, I think we should be better friends. I'm sure we have a lot in common. What are you talking about? We're completely different. No, Chloe, we might seem different, but deep down, we're the same. Not really. I know we're both big users, but I've never used people. Quit blowing sunshine up my ass. It's dark in there for a reason. I'm just trying to be nice. You don't have to bite my head off. You're right. We should go clubbing sometime. I can do blow while you're doing blowjobs. You have such a unique sense of humor. <laughs> so like, biting and sarcastic, I just love that. <sighs> Look, I read this fake nice spiel from Victoria already. Now you? Coordinate your strategies, skanks. You're angry because two different people were nice to you today? Taylor, I mean this sincerely. I hope you go camping this weekend. I hope it's perfect weather, and I hope a bear eats you. You are such an unhappy person. Are you sure I'm unhappy? Because watching you grovel for Rachel Amber's attention is making me feel pretty good. Chloe, being unhappy is a state of mind that you control. Dr. Phil said that. Save your pity. You'll need it when Victoria finds someone else to wipe her ass. Fine. 
You win. I don't want to be friends with you. I'd never be your friend. Are you happy now? Jeez, I really hit a nerve there. I am always telling people how much personality you have. Anyway, I'll let my mom know it's a definite yes on my old clothes. See ya, Chloe. What the fuck? These would most likely play right after the party with Rachel the next morning. And then later on in episode one, she'd send these SMS messages. They'd read like this. Hey, it's Taylor. I got all these ballot flats, but I'm thinking too feminine for you. But then again, you're tall. I just don't know. Chloe, you busy girl? Yes. I'm so sorry we missed each other last night. Victoria was supposed to make sure everyone who should have been invited got invited. You were so cool about it. You're not mad, right? There will be absolutely a next time. These make no sense without context. I have no clue what she's really talking about. So, uh, yeah. In episode two, she'd actually send these texts based on if Victoria drank the tea or didn't drink the tea. Chloe, you did a wonderful job tonight. I was so surprised, like in a good way. It really wasn't nice what you did to Victoria. I know where everyone's texting you congrats right now, but I'm honestly kind of shocked. There's also five unused back talks. Three for episode one with the skeeves, Taylor and Skip, and one for episode two against Evan of all people, and then another one for episode three against yourself, probably just for another nightmare sequence. There's also a couple of database nodes that mention a drug selling mechanic. Yeah, you're supposed to be able to sell drugs to Dana and Evan of all people. Then it also mentions fireworks on the school campus with options to either tamper with them or just leave them alone. It was most likely meant for the Tempest play. There's also some unused character info, like Mr. Keaton. His name was actually supposed to be Mr. Safefire, and you can actually find that in the subtitle files. On top of that, Sarah also had two different early names for her, and those could have been found in her texture files. The first one being Vanessa, and the second one being Ruth. Let's get on to some unused graphics. So it's kind of sad, because the first game didn't have any unused graphics, only had a handful. This game really only has two. The first one being Chloe's real ID, and the second one being David's Viagra pills. Brother, brother's getting it on, man, he's getting it on. Uh, uh, uh. There's also some cut locations. Like you were supposed to be on a school bus at some point in episode one, and then later on you were actually supposed to go back to the old mill again. Speaking of the old mill, there's technically a cut firewalk song that you could only hear at the beginning of the game when you're outside of the old mill. And on top of that, there's also a cut instrumental version of the song Hole in the Earth from that one junkyard scene. 
And so that is it, everybody. That is the cut content of Life is Strange. It's got a pretty janky story, but it really means well. And it really opens up the door and cements Rachel as a really good character, and maybe even one of the best characters in the series. There's a couple side plots that kind of fell short, like Nathan and Samantha. They kind of just forgot about it in episode three and just kind of threw it in last second, and it just didn't really, didn't really mesh well with me. But probably the best side plot in this game is uh, Steph and Mikey. In the D&D minigame, they absolutely killed it with that. And it's just, it probably made that story entire, like just, just better in general by making Steph and Mikey just really likable characters. And so that's, that's truthfully all I gotta say, guys. Um, it's a good game. Go and buy it. Uh, this video was a living hell to make. There were so many technical difficulties. And I hope to never have that again. Um, and, uh, since, since I almost fucking smashed this, I almost Hulk smashed this entire place to pieces. I think I'm gonna go drown my sorrows in a uh, major vat full of uh, Cracker Barrel gravy. Yeah, I think I'm just, uh, I think I'm just gonna, you know, butt naked, butt booty naked, cannonball into a vat of Cracker Barrel gravy and just stay there for the rest of the day and, and just drown in my sorrows there. Um, and so that's all I gotta say. I got so you know. Like, share, subscribe, share with your grandma, your grandma, two grandmas, yeah, you guys should get two grandmas, your mama, your papa, Joey Brinkelstein, um, your sister, your brother, I'm going to Cracker Barrel, come on if you want, if you want to come on, meet me, meet me down at the Sarnia Cracker Barrel, I'll see you there.